Okay, so this video is on using Blender's new, at least in the in the alpha version of Blender, um, the viewport real time compositor um, for normal, just like lightweight compositing for your video footage. Because yeah, when the real time compositor was first announced, I was really really excited because I felt like I'd way rather do all my compositing in in Blender as opposed to doing it in DaVinci Resolve because. I don't know. You guys have used Blender. It's just, it's, it's great. I, uh, I, I know all the hotkeys. It's really, really snappy. Everything where everything is just like makes a lot more sense as opposed to, I actually made a list of things I hate about DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> I hate diving into so many side panels for controls. Trying to edit keyframes in the spline editor is, I don't know if anyone else finds that to be a complete nightmare, but it's a complete nightmare. <laughs> but yeah, so I, uh, so I downloaded 3.0 for alpha and brought in some some footage into the compositor um, to try and try and use the the new GPU accelerated nodes uh, and I was really bummed to find out that uh, it doesn't work in the compositing layout I thought that was kind of a kind of a weird choice it kind of it sounds like they're gonna be enabling it in the in the compositor but um, we don't have that yet so uh, yeah I create a janky workaround I'm sure it is really obvious to anyone but and I just hadn't really seen this anywhere, so I thought I'd, I'd throw it out there on the internet. Okay, so first thing we need is a uh, copy of Blender that has the real-time viewport compositor. Um, apparently 3.4 just went into beta, and I downloaded it, and they took it, the viewport compositor out of that. So get the 3.5 alpha. All right, and once you have that downloaded, go to the preferences, and in the interface, um, part of that, there will be the developer's extras, make sure that's enabled, and then go to the experimental tab, which will pop up, and enable the real-time compositor. Okay, so this is the old way that we would do compositing. We would go to the compositing workspace, we would bring in an image node, and we would select our footage, select your whole image sequence or your video, let's say open image, and then boom, we have our, we have our image. Um, oh yeah, you might have to enable use nodes and backdrop. But yeah, and then you'd play this, and unfortunately, as you can see, it's not, not at all real time. It just kind of takes the frame that it ends on because it's all just the, the boring old, boring old one. And if you see, if we try and add like a blur node, well, it's like actually kind of fast. It's not it's not real time though. It's not, definitely not real time. Okay, now that we have a few effects in here, you can definitely see it uh, it takes a little bit to to load every every new frame. You can see the the whole backdrop like it it does it kind of in tiles and you can see even at the bottom here like it takes it takes a, a like half second to to composite. Far from real time. Um so yeah, what what's going on? We have we have GPU accelerated viewport enabled. Um at least in the in the in the preferences, why isn't this working? Well, it's because it is actually only a uh, a viewport compositor. It doesn't it doesn't work in the in the compositing workspace yet. So what we got to do is uh, use the viewport again. This is probably really obvious to anyone <laughs> who uh, who's thought about this for a second, but like I said, I hadn't seen it before. Okay, so we are going to we got our camera here, and we are going to add a plane. Um, we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees so it faces the camera perfectly and let's just make sure let's just scale it up so that it actually covers uh, covers the whole camera. Now with that uh, plane selected we're gonna go to the shading tab and we are gonna make a new material and this is just gonna be an image texture with the footage that we want in it and it's gonna go directly into the material output. All right, so I'm just loading in that same footage and just uh, just double check the the frames, the offset. That all makes sense. Uh, I like to click, definitely click auto refresh. I'll click cyclic at all uh, as well. Um, this might be a good time to actually change the number of frames to at least be equal to the to the number of frames in your footage. Also, if you export a PNG sequence, make sure your color space is sRGB. Um, since I export this as an open EXR sequence in ACES, I'm just going to do linear ACES. Okay, now go back to the, to the layout space. I'm going to go into into rendered mode so we can see what's, uh, what's going on. And then you go up to this little tab up here and you enable the, the compositor. Okay, and next thing you do is, again with the plane selected, you are going to add a UV project modifier. The projector is going to be the camera. Um, and then set your aspect ratio to whatever aspect ratio the footage was. In my case, it was 16 by 9. Perfect. And now 
it uh, as you can see the footage perfectly perfectly lines up with the camera yeah the the next thing i'm going to do is just with the camera selected go on camera settings and viewport display i'm just gonna turn up the passepartout 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 i don't know um just so it uh just kind of cleans up the, the edges that you don't see i'm sure you guys can see where i'm going with this uh looks uh it's pretty good uh, footage monitor all right, so I'll go back to my compositing workspace. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I have uh, this 3D viewport up here where it is GPU accelerated to have the compositing, um, but I'm just using it as a little monitor. Yeah, and we can we can actually compare the GPU accelerated and the standard CPU accelerated or CPU slow, slow time <laughs> uh, compositor. Um, if we do a quick render of a frame. So right now it's, it's just standard, it's just going. Um, I'm just gonna turn the viewport denoising off because otherwise it'll kind of make this funny, funny weird jittered effect. There we go. And we're not denoising anything anyway, it's just a, the footage. But yeah, as you can see, it's updating in real time, just like a, just like it normally would. And yeah, let's try Let's try just adding, adding a few effects. Um, so I will, in between here, I'll get rid of the old footage that we, that we had in here and instead I will put in the the effects we were using. So yeah, we'll play it and it's pretty, pretty dang real time, eh? Um, I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, you can see, you can see this one down here, it takes a second to load every single time. But this one up in the viewport, it, uh, it just, works every time. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of looks like eventually they're going to be able to put like a little button in the in the compositor here or something like that to be able to enable this uh, in the normal compositor. I think once they, it, it doesn't seem like they're super focused on it at the moment though, seeing as it didn't even make it into 3.4 beta. Um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm very excited to, at the, at the chance to, at the possibility of using Blender instead of, uh, instead of DaVinci Resolve for all my 2D compositing because, uh, yeah, DaVinci Resolve scares me. If you're interested in learning more about the Viewport Compositor, uh, I'll leave a link in the description for the developer like task list, like how how it's going for for them billing it. Um, I'll also leave a link to the the like the forum post for for feedback and discussion, um, which has been I read through a bunch of that and it's actually really really kind of helpful and, and nice. Um, yeah, I think that's basically I think that's basically it for today. Um, yeah, have a good one. Bye. I forgot to mention that, um, this is only really going to work with really basic compositing. It's not going to work very well if you're trying to do like multi pass layers or anything like that, just cause since it's a viewport, it's a viewport compositor, it's going to just overlay whatever you have over the entire scene. So, um, yeah, it, this is only really for basic adjustments, um, like glow effects or color stuff. So yeah, just be aware, at least until we get full like compositor, um, GPU accelerated compositor controls where we can actually like add, add in other inputs from, uh, from different sources. Okay. Yeah, that's it.